have a, <coughs> let's say you have a function which depends on x, y, z, and x depends on s, y, z depends on t, s depends on u, and t depends on u. In that case, what's the chain rule for round f, round t, and also for round f, round <coughs> like this? So, The chain rule says you have to figure out all the ways that a change of a variable can bring change to part of the function, and you have to you have to add them up. Okay. So if you look at how this variable t affects f, it affects f in two different ways. First, t can affect if you change the value of t because y is the function of t that's going to change the value of y, and the change of y will change the value of f. Also, the same thing will happen for the z. A changing value of t will change the value of z, and that's going to change the value <coughs> of f. So you have to figure out what this quantity is, what this quantity is, and then add them together. That's what you need to say. Let's see. Let's work one by one. So first, how do you calculate this? Well, you calculate it by saying, if I want to know how f is changed by changing y, that's like a partial derivative, right? You're just trying not, it, <coughs> what you're doing is you're trying not to think about what happens to z. You only want to know the change of f brought by changing the value of y, so that's the round f, round y. Round y. And uh, if you multiply this with dy dt, um, <coughs> notice that I'm using dy dt rather than round y, right, round t, because uh, uh, there is no other variable uh, here. See, y is a function of t only, so it's a single variable function. In that case, you write dy dt. Now, this, this is somewhat. Uh, uh, not sometimes people just write round, round y round t, uh, and and the reason for that is uh, <coughs> because at this level you have some other variables. So you might see some answers written at that form, but uh, I would say it's a good practice to write as dy over dt or d of something over d of something if uh, this function. The dependent variable is a single variable function. So we should <coughs> write like this. So that measures how t changes f. And when you change the value of t, that's going to change the value of y. And that's the rate of change of y when you change t. And if you multiply how much f changes under the change of y, then these cancel and you, you can see that uh, how you can figure out how much f will change if you change t going through y. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, but that's not the only one. Uh, t can also affect z and f, so you have to do round f, round z. <coughs> so again, write d, <coughs> z dt, z dt. And that will measure how f is changing going through z. And the change of t is affecting z and changing f. This measures how t will change f going through z. And if you want to know how f will change under the change of t, uh, the magical, uh, magical theorem in calculus 3, in multivariable calculus, is that you simply have to add all the chain, all the possible ways one variable affects the other one, and that gives you the total change of f under 
Okay. <coughs> Any questions? What about you? Hmm? UMP. I I didn't do anything yet. Uh, I mean, uh, I also need to. Something this. Yeah. All right. So now let's think mm -hmm. about this. Round the uh, round u. <coughs> Well, how many ways does u affect f? Three different ways, right? If you think about all the, the, the way, ways or, or all the paths from u to f, this is one path, another path, another path. There are three different paths coming from u to f. So what you need to do is you have to write down Continuals for each of these paths. Okay. Add them up. Alright, okay. so I'm not supposed to stay here. It's almost finished. Yeah, no problem. I'll see you whenever you finish in the gym storeroom, okay? Okay. Call Richie if he got his number. Tell him you know already. He's going to be looking for you. Okay. Okay, so look at this. <coughs> it's kind of self explanatory, right? So. You have u changing the value of s, s changing the value of x, x changing the value of f, so this measures how f, u changes f. And by the way, I, I should, if I follow this convention, I should really write this as a d because x is a function of a single variable, and also s is a function of a single variable, so I should use d first. But I'm not going to make a big deal out of it uh, if you write down round. Uh, that should still be considered the correct answer, especially because you, at this level you have uh, both u and v. Okay. All right. Um, then, <coughs> now what about this? Uh, u going through t going through y to f. So let's write it down f. Y T So that that tells you what happens if U changes T and T changes Y, Y goes to F. Is that the river? Y derivative? Yeah, this is D Y D T. I'm trying to distinguish between a partial derivative and a regular derivative. See, over here, you don't need partial derivative. Why is a single variable function? So it's just a regular derivative. Okay. Then <coughs> um. <coughs> the other uh, other path is from. Going to f, uh, going through z. So it's like, like this. Okay. So that that's all the all all the possible path from u to f, and therefore when you add up all all of these. Get the value of the total change. 